Okay, so spirals are a great first pattern to look at with understanding how these patterns are expressed in nature and how they can be applied to a permaculture design. Uh, spirals are really commonly seen in nature, so they are associated with both growth and flow of elements within an ecosystem or, or nature. Um, if you look at growth, for example, and see a couple of examples such as a snail or a, a fern frond, what happens in, in, in that instance is you've got a point of origin of where something's growing from, and as the tissues expand and get bigger as that creature grows, it's expanding from that point of origin and it's getting thicker all the time, and you end up with these spiral shapes emerging. And there's an exact mathematical sequence to the distance of each one of the um, uh, wraps of that spiral and it's called a Fibonacci sequence after the scientist Fibonacci who went who mathematically mapped it all out and the sequence is when you look at the distances and you take maybe the first one as being one centimeter and the next one is three centimeters to find out the distance of the next one you add the two previous distances so if you add one and three centimeters you get four centimeters and then to find the next one you again add the previous two, so if you add three and four you get seven centimetres and then for the next one add uh, seven and four and you get eleven centimetres. So there's this exact mathematical growth pattern and and how this spiral expresses itself. Um, there's other, so that would be growth. Um, spirals also represent themselves in flow, so particularly in the weather and the ocean you get big spiralling ocean and weather currents that um, you observe and they tend to be um, from a point of origin such as the equator where it's hotter and the ocean currents and the weather currents will spiral away from that and they'll encounter land masses and they'll change their patterning around that but overall there's this big kind of spiraling shape to how um, as, as gases or liquids rise they, they rise up and they expand out and then as they get cooler they sink again and they condense again and the water comes out and it creates these big um, circling spiral conveyor currents within the atmosphere and the oceans. Um, another one which is flow as well would be the earth and its rotation around the sun. So both the earth and sun are moving through space as the universe expands and as the earth rotates around the sun it creates this spiraling shape as the Earth is actually flying through um, space, rotating around the Sun at the same time. And even our galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy, is a spiral shape too. And our own Sun is out on one of the branches, um, quite close to the end of the Milky Way galaxy. And this galaxy too is um, moving through space in a spiralling form as it rotates around other bigger galaxy um, systems. So there's all these levels of organisation where you can see the spiral pattern playing out, even at the smallest level. So if you've got an atom that might be flying through the air as a, as a gas molecule, and it's got a nucleus to that atom, and it's got electrons spinning around, it's going to have a very similar appearance, those electrons, as the Earth spiralling around the Sun. So even from the smallest level of the atom to the biggest level of a of a galaxy or even a universe, you, you get these um, same spiral patterns playing out. So the important part with um, using these patterns is, is how you can functionally incorporate them into a design and make the best use of the elements to that pattern in your incorporation of it into the design. So with a spiral pattern, for example, you've got, in the growth case, an element that's in your landscape that's expanding in size from a point of origin and you can incorporate that into various designs where you might have a point of origin and, and you know, a growth of area around that point of origin and you can pattern that growth um, in a spiral shape. So one uh, use of that is the herb spiral where you've got um, a mound basically and you've got different environments within that mound so you've got a uh, part that's facing north where it's uh, more exposed to the sunshine it's going to be drier you've got different heights on that mound too so the higher it is the more exposed to the elements again the drier the conditions are and you can locate plant communities on that mound depending on their um, particular preferences 
So if you've got a plant community that likes to be in the shade and cooler and wetter, you can place that plant community on the southern side where it's going to be more sheltered, it's going to be wetter, it's going to receive more nutrients flowing down the soil profile in that mound. And that plant community might be more your kind of English cotton garden um, kind of community. And then as you work your way up the mound, you're getting progressively drier and more exposed. And right up the top where it's going to be the most dry and, and also you know, most exposed to the elements, you really need to pick a plant community that's going to be resilient and robust to those elements and not need much water to be maintained. So your Mediterranean plant um, herb um, community would be the best suited to those kind of conditions. Um, other applications might be in, in zone one. In that zone one area, you've got more kind of creative artistic license. As soon as you go further out from the landscape and you've got bigger scales, you really want to pick patterns that would be naturally seen in nature. So the herb spiral like this is not really one you'd see in nature. And more intensive garden beds are also one you, know, you don't see naturally expressed in nature. But in that zone one, you've got more control over that zone and you've got more ability to bring out your artistic expression and your creativity and how you shape that zone. So the spiral can be incorporated into that creative artistic expression. And one way you might do that is if you've got a pathway working your way through your garden from your house, you can have a series of key line gardens coming off that spiraling pathway and it would be a way to aesthetically shape the positioning of those garden beds in your garden in a way that um, you can maintain because you've got that ability to invest that time and energy into the um, pattern that you have in that zone one. Um, and it doesn't matter too much about it being, you know, needing that high investment of, of energy. Um, it's more the aesthetic appeal and the linking of elements that's more important in that zone one. So it can be quite usefully applied in that situation.